was a big camera guy that was an investigator come over. And uh, before it started. Thank you for coming back today. And I uh, am hopeful that our time together will be um, a fruitful. Y'all didn't think Florida got cold, did you? <laughs> Guilty. I'm guilty. That was Pennsylvania. Y'all thought y'all come down here because the sunshine, that the cold does not come. <laughs> now, I'm telling you, the Rosses, about the year, it's cold in Florida. And don't have to be in the either. Amen. 
is given unto them. A rod, a reed, like unto a rod of an angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. So yesterday we attacked this text as we dealt with the magic thrust of this post-pandemic place that we can find ourselves. And we liken it unto the period of tribulation that is addressed in the text of this season. And I still want to contend that the time that we live, much like the times of the tribulation, a lot of stuff. There's a whole lot of stuff going on that affects everything we try to do. It also introduces to us that, like in the midst of the tribulation, that the enemy is at work. So you want to understand the landscape again of what John is facing. We are also facing that by we are trying to uh, ferret our way through. And we follow God's word and follow the leading of God, that God is bringing us back to a place where we continue to do the ministry, do the working. Uh, the enemy is trying to get us off track, that we focus so much on what has happened, so much of what is no longer here, that we are here, he gets us distracted. To think that that's what we are focus on. Uh, you can't mess with God because whatever He takes, He knows how to place. He says, in fact, if I take it from you, I have the propensity to be that which I took. So, so what if he took my daddy? So what if he took my two mom? He can be my father. He is my father. He is a mother to me, a cousin to me. He can be all that we need as he promised. Somebody said that's in the promise section of the word. So again, you want to make certain as believers that we don't become like the world. And that's the whole piece I talked about yesterday on, on here, this measurement of the church is how we are impacting, what is our impact in the world. Um, and the, that whole idea is that in many ways this uh, pandemic has driven us to become more like the world rather than the world become more like us. <laughs> There is another little activity here that I need us to look at because a part of the madness and the mess that's taking place in this post-pandemic and also in this tribulation period where John is speaking again, uh, it says uh, in this text here that, that God is not without something. He's, 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 he's eradicating a lot of stuff. He's taking a lot of stuff out, but there's still something left. And so that what we need to realize is why we are there. He says there are two olive trees and there are two witnesses. Oh, well, that's what I wanted to find. There are two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. And it goes on to say that if these two candlesticks standing before God to the earth, that he will do some stuff here. I need us to know that God wants us to know that while he took a lot of stuff, he left some stuff. He says, two witnesses. Uh, when you study this, this stuff in the background, I tell you, they believe that to be uh, Elijah and Moses. I, I don't know. That's what they say. The idea is, here's some Elijah and some Moses is still here. Here's some witnesses. He says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use witnesses. He says, I know it's a crazy time, but I need some 
Jesus with us. So while, while we may not have it like we had, the Lord has indicated to us that he left something in us that he wants us to lift up and rise up and use. And that's the weakest part of our, of our existence is our witness. If the research was right yesterday, that there are more churches closing than there are opening, then we got an issue. Now, now for a long time, the Jehovah people have beat us at this witnessing. Come on, somebody. Yeah, y'all know that you close the door when you come. And that you're not home. And uh, if they would stay there just 10 minutes, they'd see you leave. Uh, well, you just wait on the go. Uh, but the idea is, while, while the churches are closing, while church planting is slowing down, Denominations are are led by trends, and and when when they're not building churches, they feel like there's no need for growing churches, for planting churches. Many years ago, I used to be before before Florida came on. Florida is Florida was number sixteen in population. That's when I was in in uh, junior high school. <laughs> and, 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 and by the time I became the uh, uh, new church development chairperson for American Baptist around 1980 or 9, we found that Florida was growing in rapid numbers. And now Florida is the number three state in population. And I, I sometimes I'm going to play all these people. Where they came from. But I know where they came from. They came from California, they came from New York, they came from Ohio, and every other place. And they came here. And so now we're number three. That's the point I'm trying to, 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 to help us understand that while numbers are up in other places, Opportunities have also increased. Uh, fewer than half of all Americans even profess that they go to church. So our numbers about going to church are good. Here again is an opportunity to witness. But God says to John and He says to us here, I'm going to give power to the witness so that my witness can. Uh, 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 in these confusing times that they can witness about my great glory and tell a story. We should be talking about the goodness of God, the saving power of God through Jesus Christ every time in my mouth. But we've got to intensify our talking points. See, we're so busy talking about what's with us. And we get, forget to talk about the main piece. He said, witnessing is still important. He said, but then I want you also talk about these two witnesses and the witnesses that he has here and us and where we live and where we do ministry. He said, I want them to prophesy. He said, that means I want them to warn the people about the danger that's out there. COVID not the only danger we have. And in fact, if COVID was the only danger, we'd be in real good shape. Because there's no safe place in the world. Church ain't safe. Not long ago, we had people out there in California going to a church, trying to kill some people, pass through the life in peril, to save some people, get the shooter out of that. We've seen how the shooter came in. Uh, Emmanuel Church in South Carolina. We've seen it all over the country where the church is no longer safe because the folk who have no regard for what the church represents and think that somehow we are losing our influence. So 
he says here, we have to warn people about the danger. But there's no better place to be in dangerous times than in the church. You can't stop going because it's dangerous because you ain't stopped going to the mall. <laughs> and they shoot up every mall they can every day. You know somebody. And so now you can't go to the church, but you can go to the mall. <laughs> you can go to the games. You ever seen those around football stadiums? They is to the hundreds of thousands. Yes, I want you to prophesy the one about the dangers. I need you to be a witness about any confusing time. I also want you to know I'm going to protect you while you're doing what I told you to do. All right. He's I'm gonna protect you from the enemy. So watch this right here. He said, I can protect you from Satan. I can protect you from COVID. I can protect you from craziness. I can protect you from all things. He said, He says, all I want is to have the witnesses there. I heard somebody, I heard you, I heard you say that that churches are closing, they're not growing, and all of that, and you know, nobody go to church. That's why we got to be We can't lead the witnesses to the, to the people. Right. You know, the Jehovah's. We can't, we can't let it go. Because God says, I need us to make certain that we're doing what we need to do in order to get that done. And so, that's the part I didn't tell you yesterday, is to wake up and realize that you left living. You didn't die. Right. He got rid of some stuff that needed to die. But he kept us so that we could go out and still be a witness. Yeah. I was having about four people say, I want to be a witness. I can't let them lie about it because this is the conference here. God see this. And know that we gotta have a witness. Yeah. He's dependent on his witness. He wants to put us in a place where we can know what's happening. Now, the second part of this text really is that we measure the temple. I need you to measure the altar. The altar. That's right up here. It's right now around here. The altar. Uh, you see, when I was a little boy, you couldn't just go run around the altar. Right? We had an altar call the other day, and I uh, called him down, and a lady was caught up, and she would put the hymn book on the, on the table and caught my eye. <laughs> and uh, one of my good members. But the idea was, she knew not to do that, but she was caught in the spirit. He says, I need you to measure the altar. Why is the altar significant? Because it represents the fact that God is in the house. This, this house is built to the glory of God. The altar is the place where we hold him, present like his, his symbols, his presence uh, on the table. And so that brings us to a place where we have high regard for the altar. And that certain things take place around the altar. You dedicate babies at the altar. You come and marry. We want to marry right at the altar. What was I saying? You want to marry here? Okay. <laughs> the problem is that we have gotten so uh, advanced that the issue becomes whether we're going to allow this to be entertainment or rather empowerment. See, so much of what we do, so
seems like entertainment wow. rather than worship. I wish y'all get back. I'm gonna keep on going because I just gotta get through this. This this this, this altar place. This altar place. Yeah. It is the place where you come to offer your prayers, to make your offerings, to give, yeah. and to give yourself, to give what God has given to you. That this whole piece makes our prayers and our gifts and our offerings of our lives to the place that God understands that we're about serious business. Uh, every now and then we have to realize that sometimes God is trying to tell us something. That he doesn't want us to get to the place where we are without him. While he is with us. While we are without him. But he is still with us. He promised to be in us. That's what Jesus said. He said, when I leave you, I'm going to leave me in you. Y'all realize that, right? And so that you make certain that you know you're not by yourself. Again, we sometimes live life in the Zoom stage, the fast stage, always moving, always shifting, that we forget about the God in us when we come from situations that are not inviting us. And he says, at the time, you ought to remember that whatever you ran up on is not meant to kill you. Because I mean it. All I'm trying to say is you can't die at the evening. So whatever you're facing, he's in you. He's in you. Even when you catch it, I mean, we're going through tough stuff. this altar piece because in many ways I believe that uh, we've got too many people who are afraid uh, uh, I preached sermon some time ago about people being afraid uh, fear has overwhelmed us and we're still trying to take a move We're trying to act like yeah. we as a fearful. Right. When in fact, we are. Yeah. Now, generally, when you're talking like this, you preach know this, all of us know this, that the people you're talking to ain't the people that give us. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah. But there are people who are friends who are fearful. And they'll say, you going down that church? I ain't going. Okay. You, you're going to miss out. But I'm not going to miss out. So, so here again, people are supporting the church, but they are refusing to return to the church. Yeah. Can I get a yeah. Look at this. When you look at the fact that God has positioned us to be in a place where he can come and sit amongst us, or we sit amongst him in his midst, in his presence, that he wants us to know he's going to protect us. That's, that's the real structure of this whole piece that the author brings to mind that we have an opportunity to be representatives for God. But the problem is, I think we are guilty. The problem is that we have let our egos mess with how we represent God. Oh, Frederick oh. mm. yeah. mm. Nietzsche, a uh, German philosopher back in 18 something, said that God. He started out that, that uh, stuff about God is dead. dead. And uh, I remember my pastor, Bishop Ross, uh, graduated from seminary in 1961, came back and was talking about this God is dead stuff and everything like that. And I was 11 years old. And I 
been a little off the actual account for anything but I was a little off. I said, well, who killed him? <laughs> 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 Somebody said who killed him.
uh, is, a, is a dilemma. When we like to work with and through. Father, um, thank you. It, it, it's a, it's a, the scenery has changed. And so we're going to have to adjust our lenses as we see what God has left on the scene, Father. You don't have to shake nothing for the people to come. You do have to direct stuff to them so they want them. Let me help you. I see they ain't getting too many faces around. The idea is that God is saying if you worship in me in spirit and in truth, you ain't got to manufacture no gimmick, go with See, we, we're trying to be too giving. Our music has changed over the years because we want to be, we want to, we want to, what did I say? Give it. We got to give it. You know? Uh, we want to, you say contemporary, we contemporize. Well, if you're talking about the law, <coughs> that's contemporary enough for me. Because he is. Yeah, yeah. Am I right about it? Right, right. I mean, if y'all believe he is, he is. So that not, I don't have to change that. Mm-hmm. But what does have to change is me. Mm-hmm. What I present to God, to be used by God. Thank you. 
also his sacrifice. It represents his sacrifice. This altar, this table, that represents him, represents his son who died for us long before we got here. If a God could save all of us before all of us was born, and he knew that it was coming, I wouldn't serve nobody else but that. But, and we're trying to make people think like they got to do a whole lot to get here. No. Invite Jesus in your life. Admit, I am a sinner. Come on, somebody. Invite him on into your life. Yeah. Accept him for the gift. And you follow me. Yeah. It's so simple. Yeah. You ought to be witness. You ought to be invited. You ought to be telling folks about me. That's what's going to cure. Yeah. I'm sitting here for my family. I always say I got five or seven. I'll be preaching here. I'll be preaching this church. I'll be preaching this church. Okay. Watch this right here. It's all. It's all. It, 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 it represents its significance. The substance on it. The sacrifice. But our salvation is the cost of it. See, that, that, that's the theology right there. Yeah. You walk right and come and I'm saved. Mm-hmm. If you say you ain't got to say you're saved. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, somebody I know you, there's somebody, somebody I know you say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 I, I, I don't really play a lot. And uh, I don't dress up like this no more. Because nobody don't dress up in the place. When I was 17, I was. So my first plane ride, go from Texas to Atlanta, go to school, all like that. And we had to dress up like this. Wow. The airline still this hat on. They had on nice suits. Had a hat on. Had gloves on. The men were dressed in suits and laid on this other night. They had to put some people off because they're not properly dressed. <laughs> But anyway, I, I don't dress like this because they'll, they'll know what you are. I, I dress them down. I'm tired of that right there. And I'm cool. I'm, I'm relaxed. And, uh, and uh, nine out of ten times, when they want to talk to you, I'm talking about people like that. They say, they say, they say, they say, they say, Say that. You know, and they say, I can just tell. I said, well, Lord, thank you for letting it show up. And somebody recognize Because that means something to me. That he is living in. And I don't know what they see to make them say it, but they feel it, they sit, they see it. But sometimes,
and you shake your limbs to it, then you can see what to look for. But let me help you. When you find it, you have to be your authentic self. Not your Sunday morning self. Not your Wednesday night self. You have to be your authentic self. Because this world is going to hell in a handbag. Because these young people who don't go to church because their mamas and daddies didn't go. Because they great work said, I'm not going to make my children go to church like mama you made me. Wrong answer. You should have done what they did to you, to yours, so that we would have this dirt that we have now. So in that mindset, we got to realize that these children, these children need to be witnessed to. A lot of what we, the witnessing we need to do starts right in our own home. Yeah. And in our family. Right. And around our neighborhood. You ain't got to go far to witness. But they need to see an authentic presentation yeah. of the believer you say you are. Something real. Something, something not to put on. You don't need no makeup and no suit to do this. Uh-huh. All you need to do is just go there and tell them the story about the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And watch God bring them to the home. I'm going to start right here with this thought. Baptisms are down in Southern Baptism. 1.8 million. We can't get no numbers on the, on the color balance. Because <laughs> we don't keep no numbers. <laughs> Got me? The baptism. Preaching 